Okay, so my journey to Queen Mary. So I had a bit of a weird journey when I first started here. I actually wanted to study medicine or dentistry or anything in the medical field when I, uh, when I was doing my A-levels. Um, I studied biology, chemistry and maths. And I also did an AS level back when AS levels actually existed um, in economics. But towards the end of my A-levels, I actually realized that I quite like maths and um, I was very good at it. I like to say that I've always been quite good at maths. And so I put it down as a backup option in case medicine didn't work out. Um, obviously at Queen Mary. Long story short, medicine didn't work out. And so I ended up coming to Queen Mary's to study maths and I've never really looked back. Um, but I think we can learn a few lessons from my journey. So I'm just gonna point those out for you now. Um, it's okay to change your mind, providing that you have a plan in the sense that I knew because it was okay for me to change my mind and thank the Lord that I, I had a, a, the offer from Queen Mary in place because if changing my mind into from medicine to maths at that last minute is not ideal. Um, but it is okay, you know, it's okay to not know what you want to do. But at the sort of stage towards the end of your A-levels, don't do a me, like make sure that whatever you've chosen that you want to do is the right option for you. Which leads on to my next point. Be sure that maths is the degree for you. University is a life-changing experience and your aim is to make it the best it can be. The only way that you can do that is if you, uh, well, partly the way that you can do that is making sure that you enjoy the degree that you study. So be sure that maths is right for you. And my next point is visit us. Obviously, given the current situation, that won't be possible right now. But hopefully when we're out of lockdown, come and visit us on a campus tour. And so you can gauge an idea um, how you might feel about studying here, get an idea of our facilities. Hopefully, if you come on, um, on an open day or an offer holiday, you'll get to meet some of the staff and team as well. So the course structure. So we'll start off with year one. So in your first year, all modules are compulsory. You don't get a choice of any classes to take whatsoever. But, and that's mainly because first year is all about bridging the gap between A-level and university. It might not seem like it, but it is a very big, university level maths is very different to A-level maths. And not everyone will have done A-levels, particularly international students. Some of them study IB, some of them study other qualifications. So every student will have a different background when it comes to maths. And first year is all about bringing everyone up to that same level so that they're prepped for what their degree has in hold for them. This is a list of modules that you will be studying in first year. You can find this on the Queen Mary website. So all you have to do is Google uh, Queen Mary Course Finder. The link will come up. In, when you get to the Course Finder, just type in Maths with Finance and Accounting and it will come up. And if you scroll down to Structure, you can see the list of modules that you'll be able to take in your first, second and third year. These modules that are underlined here, these are designed to help bridge the, the gap between A-level and university. So firstly, we've got essential mathematical skills. That is essentially an exam that you take, but you will also be in tutorials or where you basically just brush up on different skills that you might be studying. Um, you might have studied in A-levels, things like algebra, mental arithmetic, basic calculus, differentiation, integration, trigonometry, etc. And what you do is you sit an exam and you have to pass, and you have to get a certain mark to be able to pass that exam. The good news is, don't, don't worry yet, the good news is you get seven attempts throughout the whole year. So even if you fail the first time, it's not the end of the world. I myself passed second time around. And once you have passed that exam, you don't need to sit it for the rest of the year. But it is important because you must pass essential mathematical skills in order to progress to the second year of your study. The next module is number sets and functions. Now this module is basically just introducing you to some of the, uh, the fundamental concepts of university level mathematics. And it also teaches you a certain, uh, a certain set of skills that you'll need throughout your degree, such as how to explain mathematics to someone, how to read it, how to write it properly in a way that an academic can understand 
and it also and you'll be learning about things like number systems logic um yeah things like things like that um to get you started off um with studying university level maths okay so your second year which is where i am right now hopefully this is where it'll start to get a bit more interesting so in your second year five modules that you'll sit obviously yeah, this depends on your degree five of the modules that you'll sit are compulsory and you have three choices available this is the general pathway some people choose to take two two modules and some people choose to take one this is because of the number of credits that each module is worth i'm not going to go into too much detail about that right now because it is very confusing at the university, when it comes to choosing your modules, the university does make it a lot easier by giving you certain study guides and a whole email explaining how the process works. So, like I said, I won't go into too much detail about that now, but just to give you an idea. Ah, yes, as I should probably mention, you, the good thing about Queen Mary is that you have the flexibility to take classes from any department um, of, of Queen Mary. So if you have other interests, such as the arts, history or languages as most people choose to take including me you can do that if you if you want to the only exception is you cannot choose a class from the school of business and management or economics and finance i don't really know why this is i guess you can't from for business in the case of business management your degree is already joint with the school of business and management but that's just the way it is so you can take a class if you want to take a, a module from outside the maths department you can do that providing it's not from business management or economics and finance so these are the kind of modules that you can be expecting to take in um in your second year financial institutions and managerial accounting are from the school of business and management and these are some of the options that you can expect to take uh, just from the maths department So in your final year, your final year, you'll have a lot more choice available to you. Only three modules are compulsory. And again, you'll have five choices available. The same thing with flexibility still stands. If you want to, and to take a class from outside the School of Maths, you can do that. And these are the kind of modules that you can be expecting to study in your final year. Um, so things like financial mathematics, financial management, which um, and often final year is just about building on the skills that you've learned throughout your degree in more complex situations. Okay, so now we move on to the professional placement. Now what the professional placement is, um, it's when you spend your third year of university working for a company of your choice, and then at the end of the year, you will return the following September to complete your final year. So essentially you'll spend four years at university. This is completely optional. I would like to stress, you do not have to do a professional placement whatsoever. In fact, not a lot of students, and not a lot as in the majority of students prefer to just finish their degree and go into straight into a graduate job from there. But there are some students who feel that they don't want to have the pressure of job hunting in final year. And so they choose to take a professional placement. It does not count towards your final degree grade, but like it, as I mentioned before, it does form part of your degree title. So my degree title will be Mathematics with Finance and Accounting with a professional placement because I've chosen to take one and it is assessed through coursework. There is plenty of support provided by the Maths Department to help you secure a placement if you do choose to do one. Things like CV writing advice, they run mock interviews and assessment centers. They also have pre-placement tutorials that they run at the start of second year. So if you are on their books to say that you want to study a placement, you'll be put into those tutorials and they'll, they'll, give you, they'll be giving you support on finding and securing placements. And this thing that I've put in bold because it's very key, you are still a student of Queen Mary throughout your time on placement. So that means you still have access to all the Queen Mary facilities, including the library, the gym, the cafes, etc. Um, and so you are still a student at, um, at Queen Mary University when you are in placement. You might not be spending a lot of time at university, obviously, but you will still be classed as a student. 
So now we're getting on to the fun stuff, student life. So I'll start off with accommodation. So all first years are eligible for accommodation um, when they start at Queen Mary, regardless of where you're from. There used to be a rule saying that if you were from London and you lived in London, you were put onto a waiting list. That rule has now been scrapped and every first year, regardless of where they live, is now eligible for accommodation. So I can't remember, the process might have changed um, back when, since when I applied, but the way when, um, when I was uh, applying to Queen Mary, they sent me an email to apply for accommodation just after I'd accepted my offer. And you rank your preferences in order of the type of room that you want. So not the build, not the accommodation building that you'll be living in, it's going according to the type of room. So whether that's a standard room, a slightly bigger room, whether you want an ensuite bathroom, all things that there's, all those things that you need to consider. And then you just, and it's essentially a case of you're, you get what you're given. But I really enjoyed living in, in accommodation. It was how I'm living out was how I made a lot of my friends in the first year. And I'm still in touch with a few of them now. Um, it's good to be, it's, I like the independence of living out as well. So being able to do what I want, when I want. Um, but there is obviously the, um, you have to consider budgeting um, and, student, and paying rent um, when you are living out. The good thing about living in Queen Mary Halls is that every, all your bills are included in your rent. So things like gas, electricity, hot water, Wi-Fi, all of that is included in your rent. So you won't be needing to pay any extra bills on top. And even though I shared a bathroom in my first year, the accommodation was, I thought, of a very good standard. And I shared with all, and I was in a single sex flat because I shared a bathroom. Um, just note that if you do want um, it to stay in a single sex flat, then you have to share a bathroom. Shared bathrooms are only available in single sex flats and things like, things like that. Um, so then the next section is food and drink. There are plenty of cafes and restaurants available on or near campus. Um, we have Ground Cafe, which uh, is really nice coffee and hot drinks. Um, there's also the Curb uh, in the Student Village, which um, serve hot meals regularly throughout the day. Uh, the library also has a coffee shop um, inside as well. And if, you if you're living out and you want to cook your own food, we have quite a lot of supermarkets near uh, us. So there's the co-op um, down Mile End Road. Uh, Sainsbury's opposite the Queen's Building and also an Asda in Stepney Green. If you, so if you're looking to buy groceries, I'd recommend those three. Societies. Now, the, we have so many societies at Queen Mary. I think it's at least over 250 um, and ranging from all sorts of things. So we have faith, cultural, sports, the arts, music society, political societies, academic societies, any, you name it, we will probably have it. Um, and at the start of when you come and study with us, at the start um, of the semester, you will be experiencing something called Welcome Week, which is essentially the Queen Mary name for freshers. And during that week, the Students' Union will put on the Welcome Fair, which is where all the societies come together and each one has a stall they'll be advertising, you know, come join our society, come join our society. So it's really good fun. It's a, um, it's a chance for you to see all the societies that Queen Mary has to offer and just to see whatever takes your fancy. Um, societies are also a very good way to make friends and to bond with people that have similar interests to you. So I'd really recommend um, having a look into those. You can view a list of all the societies that we have on the Students Union website. So if you just Google QMSU societies, it will come up instantly. So London City, we are of course a campus-based university in London and our East London location is very ideal. It's not so, it's not so busy. We're not directly in the center of London, but at the same time, it's my land is still a very busy area. Um, uh, it's very vibrant and multicultural as well. Uh, we are minutes away from Canary Wharf, um, which is good for a lot of our students who choose to go into finance or investment banking. So it's really, it's good, got, got good career opportunities in that sense. Um, we are also one stop away on the central line from Westfield Stratford. 
Uh, so if you want to go shopping in with your friends in between classes or you want to go grab a bite to eat, you can do that. Um, we also are 20 minutes on the central line away from Oxford Circus. So again, for shopping or even just exploring London City, you can do that as well. There's so many things to do in London. Um, a lot of the museums have free entry. So for example, the British Museum in Holborn, which is also <laughs> on the central line. So it's, it, it's also very easy to get around while I mentioned the tube. Um, and there's always people willing to help if you need it. Healthcare. So I thought I'd bring this one up because it's often overlooked by a lot of students. Um, we do have a student GP on campus in Geography Square. So I would really, really, really recommend signing up to that um, when you start, mainly because um, I was lucky in the sense that I live in London. I'm from Northwest London. So um, if I was feeling unwell or if I needed to visit my GP, it wasn't, that, it wasn't that hard for me to just travel home and go and visit my GP. For international students or students that don't live in London, it's not so easy. So at least if you're signed on to the GP here, in the, in, should the occasion arise that you do need it, you can just go on campus to visit the GP. 